that we are enlarging our Angular teams. Just an invitation in case you'd like to have more information about us. Just look for me on LinkedIn. We will post on the Meetup event my link. So in case you would like to connect and share some views, we are open to, to meet you and to comment in more details and the projects. Mainly we are developing different user interfaces in the pharma sector, uh, which is kind of very important. And those are really quality, high quality projects because I mean, and studying different analysis and diagnosis and well, that's a, a good point and a good challenge in case you'd like to take a further step in your professional career. Now, Gilberto is going to go. Thank you. So, let's start. Uh, some, somewhere I read that uh, you should find a original way of starting uh, this kind of events. Yeah. And it should not be once upon a time. I won't say once upon a time I became a front end developer. Let's say like uh, last year, this room, I was uh, presenting my masterpiece to become a senior front end developer, nearly, or senior IT consultant, as we also call ourselves. Okay? And someone address and let's say, interesting question uh, regarding front-end developers. We know that uh, there, is, there is a lot of job, but not always is uh, suitable for all developers, and not always the developer has enough experience to fit in this, uh, in this kind of jobs. Okay? We're talking, of course, about uh, front-end, about front-end development. Especially on Angular, it's, uh, it's typical getting this kind of uh, proposal, like, uh, I need a a front end developer with uh, 20 years experience on Angular. Yeah, it's like, yeah, whoa, 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 so much. Angular has been around for, for now nine years. Uh, Angular AS first, okay? And then after 2016, we got Angular 2. People were like uh, a bit disappointed, disappointed with Angular 2 because it was getting almost everything from Angular AS and rewriting to a new framework. So basically, those who learn Angular JS had the obligation to start learning again, uh, like uh, a completely new framework, yeah, to start developing, because basically everything they did before was uh, uh, a completely different framework. Okay, so the question uh, that I got that day here in this room, in this very room, very same room, uh, was uh, how to. Uh, how to hire, how to identify, how to get better front end developers. Okay, so we start working from there, and it was uh, almost a year. Okay, so it was around October, uh, October 2018. Okay, so we start working and getting uh, ideas, doing things, uh, trying to figure out how to solve the problem that we have, because as you might know already, uh, I'm not sure. If explained before we are an IT consultancy company okay so basically we solve problems for people or for other companies that require some expertise or knowledge on uh, IT okay so we started gathering information going through different experiences and trying to find out how we can develop those uh, those front end front end developers but not just uh, front end developers we want something even better we want something that we call uh, proficient, proficient some uh, front-end developers. Okay, so people that uh, knows technology, but also have principles, values, and is capable of uh, interacting with other people. Okay? not just standing behind the, the, their desktop or laptop and coding, and that's it. No, we want people capable of relating or working in teams. Okay, and being able to go ahead with. Uh, the different challenges that we face in a daily basis in our line of, uh, of business. Okay, so we find uh, some kind of uh, system. Okay, we have this one goal: finding these uh, developers or making somehow these developers. <coughs> and here I can see some faces that are more junior with uh, less experience and people that already has uh, plenty experience on. Software developer, 
uh, so um, on front end development. Okay, so we kind of split our system in uh, two blocks. First, we'll gather knowledge somehow, and then we will spread that knowledge. Okay, so basically, who will gather this knowledge? Okay, so we decided first, what am I? I'm a front end developer, right? So, as a front end developer, I'm capable of learning new things, okay? But uh, only front end developers can be front end developers, no. You can also get other developers, people coming from, I don't know, a .NET background, uh, and not only developers. We can even have people coming from other uh, careers or people with uh, completely different experience. Uh, a friend of mine who is here now, is, uh, he has a, a professional sportsman background. Like he was, a, how is it? He's a water polo water player. Polo player. Okay? So a professional water polo player and at some point in his life he decided to become a front end developer. Okay? It's a big step in his life but he's willing to go and do it, okay? So basically what we are saying here is that front-end developers, any developers or any people at all uh, can get this knowledge, can learn, can improve, can gather the amount of knowledge required to become a front-end developer, okay? But also these same people can share or spread this knowledge among the community. When I put this, uh, example when I bring Leo as an example here is because we feel it inside this company like we had an, an obligation with our community with Barcelona Spain in general uh, we have a, a responsibility with our community to uh, make an influence and take a step forward and improve our community making this place even better and make people grow with us while we learn and improve uh, in our daily job, okay? So, we, in our system, decide, def, uh, define the who. We already know who can do uh, each thing in this system, okay? But then we had a different problem. How can we do it, okay? Through which uh, format we can do or we can share this knowledge that we are getting, okay? Or how we can learn because you don't just, uh, okay, I know Angular, get some Angular. No, that, that doesn't work. Get Angular. He told me uh, the other day, I have a huge problem uh, testing uh, one component. And I was like, uh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm really missed right now. Oh, okay, but I can, I can teach you. It would be easier if you just get that knowledge and pass it through, but you can do that. You, can, you cannot throw uh, what you know. You need time for that. You need a format, you need a way to communicate, okay? Communication is really important and how you communicate is really, really important. So, through meetups, webinars, Gold in the Dark, which is an amazing event that I really like, uh, master classes or any other type of event, you are capable of learning by yourself, with others, okay? And the same applies to how you can teach, how you can share your knowledge. You can host meetup, meetups like this, or I can visit down uh, where you are right now. Okay, so there are the, the same applies to who can gather and spread this knowledge and the format where you can do that. Okay, and then then it's where where you do it, where you do these meetups, these webinars. You can do it both uh, in a location or you can do it online. You can do it basically everywhere. So there is no a uh, specific uh, location to learn something. You can do it anywhere you want, okay? So, after figuring out this system, we decided who is capable of, who is capable of doing uh, this uh, learning process, how we will do it and where we will do it, which is uh, strictly related to how we do it, okay? And we face a new different question, like who is in the center of the system? In this case, of course, is us, is the, the, the people sitting down to this uh, meeting today. So because it's people who are learning, okay? And of course, uh, 
I want to become a front-end developer. Now I'm ready. I know I can go to events. I want to uh, improve myself. I want to read. I want to code. And I want to be a front-end developer. But next problem, how to become a front-end developer? Okay. And this is not a simple question. This is not something you just uh, do like matrix and I want to be a front-end developer. No. No, it's here. no, this is a process. This is uh, something that takes time, okay? And something that requires a lot of uh, reading, a lot of patience, a lot of communication, a lot of talking to your colleagues, a lot of uh, going to events, okay? I'm facing problems every day, but because we learn by doing. Okay? In Spanish, we say that like, uh, se aprende a bailar, bailando. You learn to dance by dancing, okay? So it's the same here. You learn, you learn to code by coding. There is no shortcut, there is no easy way to do it. But uh, we can do something our way. We can ease that path. We can figure out the shortest path. Even when we cannot get shortcuts, we can identify okay, what we want to become and what we need in order to become a front-end developer. But first, uh, question. What is a developer? Maybe someone already read it. Already. There are a couple of definitions. There is there is no exact definition of what is a developer. Okay, but we can define, and I want your help for that. What is a what is a developer, and what is front end? Come on, come on, let's do it. I I, I don't need to talk the entire forty minutes here. I'm sure you will talk more when. When the pizza arrive and the meal is over. Come on, what is a developer? Anyone? Someone who develops something. Good one. You were <laughs> reading. <laughs> yeah. So there are different definitions. Okay, I would I, I took two. Uh, first one, a person, a person or a thing that develops something. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm a developer and, I, and I'm not a thing. I prefer call myself uh, calling myself a person. I'm still a person. So a person in this case, we are person, a person that developed something. Okay. And what is frontend? Frontend? It's a person who specializes in frontend. Yeah. Okay. It's not frontend developer. A frontend. It's the visual part that interacts with the other parts. Excellent definition. Frontend is as he said, basically what the user interacts to, what you see in a software, in a program, what you see, what you can, yeah, what you can see and interact to, not only see, but interact to, that's uh, front-end, okay? So, by joining these, uh, these two definitions, we can get to the front-end developer uh, definition, right? You want to go? <laughs> do, it. do it, do it, come on. You want no, to it, it would be the developer that specializes in uh, okay. Improving the, the interaction experience and user interfaces to the final user who will be uh, managing all the application. Is it clear? Yeah, that yeah. I see. Yeah. yeah, good. Different definition for you. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, we can say from here that a front end developer. Is a person first, and a person that is capable of, capable of develop the the frontal part of an application. Okay, a person who can develop something that is part of a computer system. Okay, and a user can interact to this something. Okay, so now that we know what we want to become, okay, what we want to do. We can define uh, what are the technologies that we want to learn. Okay, so front-end developer is uh, someone, it's a person that is doing something. Okay, but front-end development, okay, is a part of the web development. Okay, and there are two diff three different ways of being a web, a web developer. You can be a front-end developer, or you can be a back-end developer. Mm -hmm. These are the two main paths. 
And then if you are a backend developer, you can specialize somehow as a DevOps. Yeah, someone that is uh, in between there is not uh, purely backend developer. Okay, is someone as I like to know, as I like to to be someone that, that knows a lot of uh, backend, but also knows a lot of system, and also even knows uh, a lot of front end. Okay, so we are focusing on the front end part. Okay, this this uh, this is a definition that you can find online. In roma.sh, okay, it updates every year, and every year you can get a personal recommendation of the author, which are the yellow ones, and then the other color, which I don't know the color name, is available options. Which is the color name? The other one. Well, the other that is not yellow will be an open. Are other options, okay? So basically. Uh, here uh, you will see through a few slides now that uh, you have uh, different options and then the author recommends uh, some technologies that you need to learn in order to become a front-end developer. Okay, so we are going to analyze a little bit this part and then we will reduce it to what we need to become a front-end developer focusing in Angular. Okay, so what we need to, to learn uh, Angular basically, and today here we are doing an introduction to uh, to this part. Okay, so that's why we are going to still. Okay, even if you don't want to become a front end developer, you want to go with any of the other part. Uh, there are basic stuff that you need to learn. Okay, uh, as a developer, as a web developer, you need to you need to learn to learn Git. Okay, so. Uh, we are uh, social people, like people that gathers and those things. Even when you are not uh, physically next to each other, you can connect to people anywhere in the world today with internet and work today. Okay, so you need to learn Git because basically Git is the best uh, version control system uh, to work with other people remotely and work together in a, in the same project. Okay, so Git really really important. You need to learn uh, terminal, uh, command line interface, terminal, or depending on your system, you will get different names like console or uh, how is it called in Mac? People from Mac. Uh, terminal, right? Terminal. terminal. So uh, you need to learn terminal uh, because it's the way that you uh, interact with uh, what is behind your operating system. And this is a common interface in most uh, operating systems. Then you also need to learn data structures and algorithm. You need to learn some patterns there. He mentions as a personal recommendation GitHub, which is, uh, is, a, is a web application. It's a, a GitHub is like a community online, but basically it's a user interface for Git. Okay? So it's a way of working with Git. In my case, I used to work with a different one. What is the other name? The name of the we have Jira. No, it's the Big Bucket. Big Bucket. Big Bucket. I used to work with Big Bucket, and then uh, I, I ran out of uh, projects on Big Bucket, so I took over my Git account, and I'm now working on GitHub again. So GitHub uh, is important because it's free. You can create as many projects as you need and share it. And we are talking here about the basic stuff that you need to learn. Uh, you need to learn about licenses because if you do something and you then want to share it with the community, you need to know how you can protect your code. Okay, but if you also want to sell it and you want to make it private, you want to, you want to take profit by selling your uh, your licenses or how people or, or control how people interact with your code, this is important. And in in most cases, developers are not uh, quite. Uh, Smart in this case because we just get caught up in the in in the repository and let people get into our code. Okay, but this is really important. Then you get semantic versioning. Then you get uh, APIs, HTTP. How to get data when you are uh, calling different uh, different API, APIs online? Then you get design patterns and character encoding. All of this. Is really important. All of this 
you need to learn if these are the basics. Okay, and when I was uh, saying that there is no shortcuts, this is the first step. Okay, as they say in the in the Roma, uh, in the Roma presentation, the idea of defining this Roma is not uh, that you are compared to do something or learn some technology. This is basically a general idea that uh, the author gets by talking to people doing uh, doing pools in the community. OK, so basically it tells you what is common, what is most used in the community and is, uh, as he said there, a personal recommendation avoiding uh, the trendy technologies. OK, so we get deeper. We already learned the basic stuff. We are good with it. We are already good doing a lot of uh, algorithms. What do we do now? That's uh, the first step. Second step, you need to learn some basic stuff about uh, web development, like really getting your hands into the code and start learning stuff. First, first thing, HTML. Okay, so basically, when we talk about HTML, this has been here from the beginning of the web. HTML is uh, the body of what you build. Okay, without this, you have no structure. Okay. After HTML, you get CSS. When we talk about HTML and CSS, we can do a kind of a comparison between HTML and CSS and a bride. Yeah. A bride or a groom. There are girls in the room. When you get a bride, or, or when you get the bride, you then need the dress for the bride. Okay, so HTML will be the bride. CSS is the dress for the bride. Okay, so. More or less, so you get an idea if, uh, for, for those that are not uh, web developers. And then you get basic JavaScript. If HTML is the, the bright, CSS is the, the dress, what would be JavaScript? The movement. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> movement interaction is, to, is how you give life to whatever you are building there. So, you need to learn HTML, you need to learn CSS, and you need to learn some basic JavaScript. I'm not telling that you have to be like Einstein, Einstein coding JavaScript. No, you need to learn the basics here. There are a couple of things mentioned here. Like, for example, in HTML, you need to write HTML. There is no uh, other option there. You need to learn some basic uh, search engine optimization, because if you are doing a website, if you are doing a web application, you don't want that to be in your pen drive. You want that to be live on internet, and you want people to find your site. Okay? You want people to interact with whatever you are building there. Okay? You want to do it cool. You want to do it pretty. You want this to be uh, nice for the users interacting with your website. Okay? And then you want this site to be able uh, to be more dynamic. You want this site to retrieve data from an API. An API. You want to maybe even uh, faster. The shape is quick, quick do it quickly. faster. Yeah, good one. And as a coder, you want to do it better. Okay. So HTML, you have to do what you have to do there. No shortcuts. CSS, there are ways, ways of uh, improving your coding on CSS. Okay. JavaScript, there are there are tons of ways of being better in JavaScript. Okay, so the here they mention ECMAScript 6, which is the standard behind JavaScript. Okay, there is a new uh, standard uh, being prepared right now, but the current standard, uh, the current standard is uh, ECMAScript 6, which is the one released on 2015. Okay, and it's basically the main reason why uh, Angular decided to migrate from Angular JS to uh, Angular 2, okay, to get all of these new features, including in MyScript 6. And being this, the standard behind JavaScript and the other language that we will see now, uh, which is the default language is in Angular, okay, it's really important that you, you, you read it, okay? So you read it and you understand it. So we learned some basic stuff. We already know uh, how we can start coding. 
collect some stuff. We are starting to get an idea of how to become a front-end developer. What do we learn next? Okay. We are capable of creating HTML. We are capable of creating CSS. What do we do next? We need a design if we want. The next step in this path would be learning Fakash managers. Okay, so there is a say we do not reinvent the wheel. Okay? So there is, a, there is a lot of knowledge in the NPM library uh, or repository. NPM, for those who do not know it, is the biggest code repository online. You can get basically anything there related to JavaScript. Okay? But you can get mainly anything in that repository. Okay, so you need to learn package managers in order to take advantage of the common knowledge in the world. So, people, if you are facing one problem, basically someone else already faced that problem. Okay, so by learning package, uh, by learning or deciding which package manager you are using, in our case we use npm, uh, you will be able to speed up your development and you will be able also to release your code or whatever you are doing into uh, or contribute to these uh, libraries or repositories. Okay, so you learn some HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know how to get and release your code. Now what is, what's next? You need to keep improving. Next step will be learning CSS preprocessors. Okay, so CSS is good. You can do a lot of things with that. You can put colors, give order, give a shape to the HTML. Okay, but it's not enough. It's not enough because it's hard to code uh, the CSS uh, without. Uh, it's hard if you're doing a big application. If you're doing a small application, there is no need to go into a preprocessor. And we will talk about that later. Okay, but if you're doing something that is uh, complex, that is uh, big in web, you need to learn SAS, and we will see later why. This is like uh, CSS on steroids. This allows you to do a lot of things that are, are not possible in uh, pure CSS. Okay? And even when you learn SAS, which is uh, the default one, and it's really good, who of you know SAS already? Good. You don't? Uh, so, after you learn some SAS, you learn how to improve your CSS code. There is always a good reason to learn uh, other CSS frameworks, okay? Basically, because it allows you to speed up your development and it eases the way you make your application better. It eases the way you make, you make your application beautiful, okay? I was a bit disappointed in two uh, specific points here in this uh, roadmap. First, the CSS frameworks. Uh, I'm an Angular uh, developer, okay? But I develop, with, I develop with Angular material. And here, they only talk about Bootstrap as a defined or choose an option by the, by the author, okay? But last year, 2018, uh, material, Angular material was included here. Okay, so later we will talk about Angular material, but here is uh, Bootstrap is recommended, and Bootstrap is really nice. It has been around for some time now. Okay, but JavaScript developers are not quite fans of Bootstrap because one tiny reason: Bootstrap uses jQuery. Okay, for those who doesn't know jQuery, when you learn it, it's like oof, amazing. After some time, it becomes a little heavy and you stop using jQuery. Because for beginners, it's good. You learn to do things faster. You can do amazing stuff by just typing a few lines of code. But at some point, it becomes useless and really, really heavy on your code. Okay, Bootstrap is really uh, trendy in the community. It has been around for some time now, but I prefer as an Angular developer using Angular model. We will talk about material later. Okay. Then some CSS uh, architecture, the most common in, in the community at this moment is uh, BIM, I think. 
this is not something that you use purely. This is something that you can merge or combine with other architectures. Uh, and it's a good way also of organizing your code. Okay, so, and you learn, take a look here. We talk about HTML, okay? And half of the path we have been talking about CSS, basically. CSS preprocessor, CSS frameworks, CSS architecture, okay? So we define content. We were talking about front-end is what people interact to, front-end is what people see, okay? That's why it's so important that you learn how to make things good, how to make it look good, okay? And that's why it's so important to learn all of these uh, uh, technologies. So, after you learn all of that, which is a lot already, <coughs> I want you to read here in the middle, you have to pick a framework. And you will say, oh, come on. We have been 10 minutes talking about technology and now it's when you're getting a framework. Yes, we have to learn a lot of stuff to get a framework. Because basically this framework, what it does is to encapsulate most of those technologies, okay? In order, as we said in the CSS framework, in order to make your job easier, okay? So libraries and frameworks allows you to uh, do, do things faster and do not spend time on things that are already done or that can be copy pasted or pre-used uh, in a way, okay? So, as I said, two points on this roadmap uh, was a kind of a disappointment to me. First one, the CSS framework. And second one, the chosen framework by the author. Okay. In this case, he went with React. Come on. Come on. Now, React is really good, but it's not even a framework. That's a common discussion in the community today. Okay. React is a library. Of those who doesn't know it. It's uh, really good. And my friend David is he's a, he's an expert on React. React. So it's it's uh, it's common finding in the community this kind of arguing like uh, uh, what do you prefer? View, React, Angular. Any solution is good. So you can go with whatever you need. Uh, they they used to say that one thing never treats all. Okay, so try going to a shoe store and tell the, the whoever is selling there, I want a pair of shoes. You will say, what is your size? Yes? So whenever you are creating a new project, whenever you are creating a website, a web page, or whatever you are doing, even if it's a small page, first thing that you have to take into account is how big, how complex it's going to be. Okay? And after you decide how big or complex it's going to be, you decide which framework technology you are going to use. Okay, so this is really important. Angular is not the, the favorite one. I can live with that. I really like Angular and I can understand that people prefer other technologies. Okay, but it's really important that you understand that when you choose React, you are able to uh, choose basically everything. If you want to do testing, you are capable of selecting any type testing library to, to do your testing, basically. If you want to do some uh, CSS coding, you are able to choose any CSS framework because React as a library allows you to do that. But when you choose Angular, you are getting Angular detractors call it uh, boilerplate, like a huge boilerplate, like you get a lot of functionality that you might not see in your life. Okay, so if you are just doing one website, maybe you don't require uh, Angular for that development. If you are doing something small, maybe React is good. And that's why React is so popular today. I'm pretty sure that the number of people developing big applications, line of business applications, is quite small compared to the people learning how to code, the people in the universities today, the people that is starting this uh, front-end or web development part, okay? So that's why React is so popular. If you go to Stack Overflow, for example, most of the questions, the numbers there are like three or five times more questions related to React than Angular. 
And that's because Angular is focusing medium and large applications. Okay, so you can pick a framework now and you are ready to start coding like in a better shape. It's true that if you try to set up the entire Angular framework by yourself, it would take around a week. Okay, so you can think about how many customization it has behind only one line of code that you can do to create a new Angular project, and we will see it at the end, at the end of, the, of the presentation. Okay, <coughs> so pick a framework and let's start coding. Okay, so in this case, I is uh, worth Worth mentioning, view. Uh, there is a good friend of mine, Paul, that is not here today, and he's an active member of the content community here at Andy, even when he's no longer in the company. And uh, Paul is like a huge defender of view. There you go. React, Angular, and view. We will focus uh, today's uh, talk in Angular. Okay. And there is the next step, the next stop in, in our plan. You know the basics already. You know some CSS and you do it in the best way possible. You already picked your framework, okay? So now, this is really important. How would you test your application? Okay? It's really, really important. Whenever you're doing something that is not a small application, whenever you're doing something that needs to last in time that you test your application. Again here, uh, technologies related to Angular are not the selected one. As you can see in this part, the trendy technology is React or Vue. But for Angular, by default, you get Karma and you get Yasmin. Okay, so these two technologies combined allows you to test the basics in Angular. Okay. And it's really important as developers that you understand that testing is a great part of the uh, development process because if it's important to write code, it's really important that this code has quality. So the quality that you deliver is validated uh, to this uh, testing part. Okay, and I know for sure that test, uh, that developers are no friend with the testers. I know for sure that we don't like to test, but this is really important. Okay, there are different ways of testing your application. When I talk about Karma and Jasmine, I'm basically talking about unit testing. This is a concept that uh, some of you maybe already know, or I'm sure that already know, maybe others don't. But unit, te unit testing is the basics. So if you write a class, if you write a function, if you write a fragment, fragment of, of code, it's important that you test it as a unit, as something unique that can be uh, tested uh, and then tested in different ways, like integration tests or functional tests. There are several test, uh, test, test techniques. Okay, so we pick the framework, we start developing, and we already tested. It's really good. What do we do? What do we do? We keep learning. Okay, so it's long. Come on. We have to learn a lot. Uh, I'm sure that uh, maybe if it, if they weren't for the pizzas, uh, a lot of you would be like, "This is not for me. I'm going." Okay, so you have to keep learning. That's not. Uh, this is uh, just a brief introduction to the technologies, and it's long. And there is a lot to learn after this. Okay, but we can make it easy. We can make it easy because we are smart. We can get from that huge part. We can identify what we really need. From the basics, I'm pretty sure that HTML, CSS, CSS and JavaScript, that, that, that's, uh, that's required. You cannot do anything without that. Then you pick a package manager, NPM, for example. Then you get some CSS preprocessor. We set SAS. Then we go with Angular Material. I want to include it in my path because it's my decision. Okay, I'm an engineer, I'm a developer. I can take these kind of decisions, right? So even when it's not in the list, I can include it there. I can I can include liters. I can go with prettier, even when the architect of the project argues with us and says, what is that? 
I don't want to use that. But we can get prettier to make our code more standard, to make it look better. Okay? So, oh, web back. Web back. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Web back? <laughs> Who knows web back? I don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been developing Angular for three years, and I'm not, I, I, I have to say, I'm not good at web back. I know nothing about web back. But you don't need it. Don't need it because I don't need it because the framework in that huge boilerplate that uh, the real developers are always talking about is included. There. I don't need to learn web part. so I will put, I won't put it in both. Let's go next. But it's, but it's important. It's really important. Webpack is basically what allows Angular to be what it is. It's behind Angular. You don't see, it, but it's there, and it's basically what makes your framework work as it works. Good. OK, so then we are using NPM. We can learn some NPM scripts to build our application, to deploy our application, to test it, to link it. OK, so we learn some scripting. And we dive into, into the framework. And we start discovering new technologies like RxJS. Who knows RxJS? Yeah, it's programming for that Good. Have you, have you worked with this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have to say, RxJS is going to be in ECMAX Script 7. So, this is one of the improvements of the new standard. That's how good is this library, because this is right now a library. This is something that you have to install by hand. And this will be included in the new MX Script 6 uh, standard, MX Script 7. Okay. okay. This allows to allows you to code things simpler and improve how you code inside. This make makes your code cleaner by giving you some operators, is how they call it, and code through events. Okay. So in future sessions, we'll be talking about uh, RxJS and we will do a lot of code with this. We use it every day and it's really, really good uh, working with this. Uh, and then you get TypeScript. We have been talking about JavaScript, and here we have to make a stop. TypeScript is the language behind uh, Angular. We were doing a lot of focus on, on JavaScript because as they define TypeScript is uh, JavaScript at the end. Everything you call in JavaScript is TypeScript. So you can say you don't require to learn TypeScript uh, to code in Angular. If you know some, Java, some JavaScript, you are good to go. But again, if you want to do a big application, if you want to do something like robust, big, strong, you have to uh, learn some TypeScript. OK? Then the testing, there is no shortcut there. And last, last but not least, PWA. Who knows PWA? Progressive. Progressive web apps. Good. So, a progressive web app is uh, basically a way of wrapping your application and deploy it as a native application. It's taking advantage of uh, this kind of simulation. At the end, you're using your web application, but you code it in a way that is optimal to deploy and, and run in any device, okay? So by knowing PWA techniques, by knowing how to include uh, this uh, PWA in your application or implement your application as a progressive web app, even when you don't deploy it as a native application, this will look like and be a lot more faster because this allows you to improve your code in a way that you won't be able to see before. And it was mentioned in, in the pod, there is an easy way of uh, checking how good is your application by <coughs> taking a look into the inspector in Chrome you get one tool that is called Lighthouse. I totally recommend it. If you're developing something now, go to Lighthouse and run a profile inspection, and you will see. You will see how good is your application. This will give you some insights on how good is your application on search engine uh, optimization, uh, how fast does your application run in different uh, network speed. So this is uh, something to, get to take into account, and as I said, even if you're not doing something uh, to deploy like a native application or, or run it uh, as a native application. 
this is uh, really good to take into account. Okay? And this is the short version, but still not enough. Still, we have here a lot of stuff. Let's make it simple, right? And this I call it an even smaller version of the path. So we got the path, long one. We get it, a short version of the path. And I was thinking about it, and this I discussed with uh, my friend Leo here. What are the basics? Like a lot of words there, a lot of technology. What are the basics? What is what you need to learn? That if you don't learn that, you won't be a good Angular developer. The basics, the basic stuff. And I reduced the list to these uh, six technologies here. Okay? So there are three blocks here. There are how to give it a body, okay? how to create some structure. There are things related to how good your application will look like. And there are things related to your code, to how good will be your code. You will go with TypeScript and you will do your testing with Karma and Jasmine. That's the basics, basic, purely basics of uh, Angular. Without this, there is nothing. But this is something that we can learn. And this is something that we can easily get an idea of what it does and how we can use it and include it in our application. This is something that once you learn it, when you create an application in Angular, your first application, you will be like, hey, this is HTML. I know this, this is CSS. Hey, these are the tests. Oh, this is a test suite in JavaScript. Okay, so without this, no, don't, don't go into, into Angular. But with this, you got it ready. First, HTML. We were talking about HTML before. Uh, hypertext markup language is basically how you write your, your structure for the components, the web components that you are developing, or how you give a structure to that website, <laughs> okay? So after that, you get CSS. Now it's uh, CSS3, the standard, okay? It's the latest standard. Uh, basically, how this is how you make it look good, okay? So cascading, cascading, stitching. And this is what you put over that HTML to make it look good. As I said, if you want to make it even better, you will learn some SAS. You can learn less. There is another framework called less or preprocessor called less. But SAS is like quite simple. And as I said, CSS on asteroids. This allows you to include variables in your CSS. This allows you to do nesting. The, the same way you write HTML, you can write them these uh, style rules with SAS and make it look exactly like your HTML. It's easier to maintain, it's easier, easier to work with. Then you also get loops, you can split uh, your code in functions, you can import fragments of CSS and do a lot of things that you won't be able to do in purely <coughs> CSS, okay? So the name is awesome. Uh, they are called themselves, themselves syntactically awesome style sheets. CSS one was not complex, you know, the name. And after that, we get Angular Mobile. Okay, so we were talking about these three in the path, but I think it's important that we take a, a moment here. Angular Material is uh, different than Bootstrap in not using jQuery, okay? But it's also different in another way. Angular Material is maintained or based on material design, which is the theory that uh, or the definitions that Google Google uh, bring to the world to make better user interfaces and better uh, user experiences. Okay, basically, uh, people in Google decided to uh, standardize how interfaces should look like and how interfaces should be uh, interacting between them and be with the uh, with the user. Okay, so 
to make you, uh, to give you an idea of what angular material is proposing or what material design is proposing, we will see a small video. It's a one minute video. So you can get an idea of material design. Material design is alive. And it lives in a world a lot like ours. A world that's responsive, natural, aware, and intentional. Material design uses responsive animation to create energy. When you take an action, feedback is immediate, but it never keeps you waiting. Motion adapts to the distance an element needs to travel, focusing on how fast something needs to move, rather than how long it should take to get there. Motion should feel natural, moving the way things do in the real world. Nothing should instantly start or stop. Elements in motion have momentum and take time to speed up and slow down. They respond to forces like gravity, moving in curved paths instead of in straight lines. Material is also aware of the world around it. The way something enters the screen can affect the movement of everything else. Elements can push other elements out of the way or attract them. Above all, material isn't random. There's a purpose behind every animation. Motion guides you. It keeps you focused on what's important and makes sure you don't get lost. It also hints how something might react, even before it's triggered. Whether your brand is fun and playful, or serious and straightforward, using the motion principles for material design will help you produce a quick, clear, cohesive experience. Get to know how things move at design.google.com. How good is that? How good is that? Yeah. So is it enough learning HTML, CSS, and some JavaScript and do something? No. You don't go to the kitchen and open the shell and <coughs> throw things there. No. You need to mix uh, everything in the right portion. You need to have taste. You need to do things in a way that is uh, that people can like it. You just don't throw code there and do it without any purpose. No. You do things in a way that is good for you, but also for others, okay? So taking advantage of CSS frameworks is basically that it's getting what is a standard and is accept accepted by most of the community, okay? And apply it to your product. You don't have to invent it again. You can just include one framework, the one, the, uh, any framework you choose. It can be bootstrap, it can be material, I really like material, I recommend it. And then do it. It's true that you can do it by yourself. You can learn the theory and do it by yourself. Okay, but that's not enough. You will be spending a lot of time like coding again, again something that is, is already there and you can uh, reuse. Okay, so HTML, CSS, SAS, and then Angular Matic. And after that, we get TypeScript, okay? TypeScript, as is defined here, is a superset of JavaScript, okay? It's basically JavaScript, but then you put some types on top of that, and you get TypeScript. It's really good. And the importance of TypeScript is that it allows you to, while coding, detect errors in an early stage of the application or whatever you're doing, okay? It basically prevents to go or run into errors that are like typical on JavaScript development, okay? And by using some basic features of TypeScript, you will prevent those errors and your application will be even better. And it's compatible with any browser, any house, any operating system. It's something that is a standard right now. And it's also open source, even when it's from Microsoft, okay? Yeah, uh, I read a news, I, re I read some news this week about Richard Stallman, which is the, Main figure of the open source open source community doing a lecture in in Microsoft, Microsoft. and the, the there were like a lot of memes <laughs> online saying like Richard Stallman was doing a lecture in Microsoft and the world didn't end. Okay, what's next? What's next? Bill Gates with an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's really a standard easy to learn, and if you learn some JavaScript, 
between the jump to tie strip is not that complex. Okay, and then as I said, car management. This is uh, totally optional, but I encourage you to learn some JavaScript, uh, some some te testing techniques, because this is really important. Our architect is always pushing to do some some testing. Uh, but, but this is really important, and you will see the results when you do it. If you are involved in a big project, you will see the results, and you will see uh, how this pleases the the client. Okay. These two uh, work combined. Karma uh, is the test runner. It's only used to make your life easier while you run the test, even when it's not the fastest test runner in the world right now, because yes, which is another test runner, it's really good and it's even faster, like twice faster than Karma. Karma is, I think, one of the only things remaining from Angular years. It's one of the only technologies that came from the old, uh, old framework. Okay, and just mean is how you write that test, those tests. Okay, so we, we forgot about this. We were talking about Angular, but what is Angular? No, I put it there intentionally. Now we were talking about some technologies to make an idea. Okay, so far so good, right? So what is Angular? That's our next step. We already know some technology, we are ready to start doing things, but we haven't defined Angular. As we already learned those technology, we can define it now. Okay? We already mentioned that it's based on TypeScript, you code it on TypeScript. It's open source, that's really good, and it's for uh, creating front-end web applications. Okay? Of course, if you, are doing, if you want to be front-end developers, it's nonsense learning some framework that is not from front -end. Okay. So TypeScript based, open source, front end web application platform. And then, and this is really important, it's led by an Angular team inside Google. Okay? So the company behind uh, Angular is Google, and that's really nice. And then React, React guys uh, and girls will say, come on, React is, uh, real has a uh, face behind. Okay? Yeah, and but license of uh, React is not completely free for what I understood it's it's uh, it's free but if they like something of your code I believe they can they have the rights to, to use it for their own yeah and angular is completely free it's free and it's from Google and Google is basically everywhere today so and as we mentioned it's a complete rewrite from the same uh, from from angular yes okay and next, uh, we know what is Angular. What are the main benefits? I have to say this is a personal criteria. This, uh, this is taken from my personal experience. It's an opinion, and people can have tons of opinions. There are opinions like uh, like trees in the world. Okay, so there are four main uh, key benefits that I I have observed so far in uh, developing with Angular. The first one is consistency, and it's true that you can work in different rates, rates that are related and not, again, but by using these technologies inside the framework, you will be creating something that is uh, consistent and you can move from one from one side to another, and it will work, usually it will work uh, smoothly, okay? So consistency is really important, uh, we have to say that Angular is uh, built in a modular way, modular way, okay? So consistency is the first one. The second one, productivity. Once you start coding, once once you get uh, some speed on these technologies, you will be able to code like a, like you. you will be coding for hours and you won't stop, okay? Because you don't have to stop thinking in how do I have to find a library or where do I find the library to include to do some internationalization or what happened is uh, if now uh, I want to use, uh, I don't know, different routing library, no, everything is there and all you have to know is get some some uh, knowledge on the scripts in Angular CLI, like interacting and creating component services directives and then if you have a clear definition of, of what you have to code, there's nothing to stop you. You'll be coding like 
really smoothly, and this increases uh, your, productiv uh, your productivity. Okay? The next one, we mentioned TypeScript before. Catching errors early, uh, to me, is one of the key benefits of Angular. By using TypeScript in testing, this is really important. And again, if you're doing small projects, maybe you don't feel it. But if you're doing something for a client that requires a big development, that requires time, uh, a lot of time to create this product, catching, error is, ca catching errors early is uh, one of the uh, most important benefits of using Angular. Okay? And then, of course, to me, the most important, maintainability. Okay? So, if you are doing something to throw away, it doesn't matter. But if you, if you are developing <coughs> large applications, line of business applications, something that is uh, really big, being able to bring people to that development and get up to speed with the development in one, two weeks is really important. And you do that by writing clean code, by maintaining your application, by clear and really well uh, structured. Okay, so consistency, productivity, catching errors early, <coughs> and maintainability to me, the key benefits of using Angular, and of course, you can have your own. Okay, so a lot of theory so far. So how to set up an Angular project? Uh, if you want, those who have laptops uh, can go from here and, and code. We will be talking like a little bit about how we can create an Angular project. We will be seeing some uh, of the technologies working. And you and I, I will go there and I will do it. OK, so how to set up? Angular requires first step. And you can see this in the Angular setup uh, website. Angular requires Node.js and NPM. You go to the Node.js website to install any of the recommended versions there, and you get both mm -hmm. Node.js and NPM. This will allow you to access the NPM, NPM repository and install most of the dependencies that you need for Angular. OK, so if you don't have it already, you can go to Node.js and install, I recommend using the, the LTS live uh, version, OK? But you can get any of the versions there, the versions there. If you already have it, or you don't know if you have it in your laptop, you can, from running your terminal or console, or however it's called in your operating system, uh, you can run node minus or dash b, and you will <coughs> see which version you already have in your uh, computer. That's for node and for npm, npm minus b, dash b, and you will see also the version. Okay, so you can install it and then check the, the version. And this is the first step. This is uh, the, uh, what the first thing you do to prepare uh, your computer in order to create an Angular application. Okay, good. I have it installed in my computer. Uh, so next step, how to set up an Angular project? First, you install you know, an NPM, and next, you install Angular CLI. Okay? Angular CLI or Angular Clip is a command line interface. It's the command line interface provided by Angular, so you can speed up some uh, tasks or actions while you interact with the with the uh, framework. Okay, so. The first one that we will see here is how to create an Angular application. Copy paste here. Okay. Not good. Okay, so uh, by installing with npm, npm install dash g dash for global Angular CLI, you will get uh, some uh, commands or functions in your in your uh, command line interface that will allow you to build, create new projects, link code, uh, test your project, okay? It will allow you to interact with your Angular application. After you install uh, Angular CLI, you can create a new application by typing ng new my app. In this case, I choose my app uh, as is in the, in the documentation. But this is basically the name that you are choosing for your application. So you create with Angular 
a new application called my app. OK, and after that, you can launch your application. I will do it here. So let me get to the terminal. Oh, it might take some time if you do it the first time, but I already have it here, as I said, and I will hide this bad copy paste here and go into one that I already created. I will go into my desktop folder and then into my app, which is the code, the, the how I code the application that I am. Okay, so what do I have there? What, what do I have? Do I have there? Too much sun. Zoom. You can't see anything. Okay, but once you have created your application, how you run it? It's like ng. How is it? How is it? People who know Angular, how you run an application? Ng serve. Okay, so commands are really easy and and quite similar to, to our common language, okay? So, ng new, new application. ng build, you build your application. ng test, you test your application. And if you want to run it, you do ng serve, okay? There are a couple of flags that you can learn, like dash o, which is open, and it will open your application right away. Or you can choose a different port by uh, typing uh, double dash port and defining any open port in your application, okay? By default, Angular launches in uh, 4200, okay? And there is people there always changing ports, like using any port available. So, uh, hey, any, oh. I would do any surf, and I will use the flag dash O to open the application right away. And what this does is basically your HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, or whatever you have there, you will merge it all together and launch your application. And you will be able to see finally your first application. This is a basic Angular application. This is uh, the, the, what you get when you do the engine new, okay? Which is basically a title, an icon, and a list down there, okay? But when you do the engine serve, you are capable of doing changes. And this will be watching your changes and preloading the website uh, each time you change any of your uh, application files, okay? Or most of your application files, okay? So that's a good way of uh, developing. And if you have two screens, it's really good because you are coding in one side and then you are seeing how it looks like or, uh, or what is the result in the other side, okay? So- I have a question. We're going to, to use us in this more player or yeah so i didn't i didn't create the application from scratch but when you do the engine it allows you to choose which uh css preprocessor you want to use if you want to use any so you can go with pure css or you can go with uh SAS. you can even change it once you create the application okay so as i said the guy who wrote the the bug uh, has uh, his personal opinion and i have my own I really like uh, SAS, so I usually go with SAS even when I'm doing small things. Um, and that's it. So this is Angular. Um, here, let me jump to the presentation. Mm. What is the goal? And that's basically how you merge all of those uh, technologies and create your application, okay? So, next steps. I was planning to put here the keep learning uh, slide, but no. Next steps. This is uh, one first uh, introduction, or as I call it, chapter one for these sessions. Uh, we will keep doing this, as I said at the beginning. Uh, we, we were facing this problem in the company, how to, uh, how to find or how to hire or how to develop these developers. 
project, how to find these uh, better developers. And we decided that, yeah, of course, you can find it anywhere, but you can also do your, you do your stuff to make it happen, right? So one of our actions would be continue doing these uh, angular meetups, okay? So future topics to go over here, deeper topics and uh, more technical ones would be talking about the Angular core, the router module, schematics, which is uh, an amazing topic, Interna internationalization to make your applications look like uh, understandable for anyone around the globe. And then, of course, unit testing, Angular material, progressive web app, HTTP, services, uh, RHS. We will be doing uh, at least one session a month, okay? And that would be the way that we would facilitate any hiring new developers. And if you are not joining our team, if you are not joining our company, at least you will be becoming a better front end developer, okay? So this was supposed to be the last slide, okay? And I learned also that if you put Thank you. In a slide, what people do. I was trying to decide this one or this one. Both. 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 This one, huh? Yes, so. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the introduction to Angular, uh, this uh, talk about the technologies in the framework. And if you have any question, I don't know what time is it. What time is it? Did someone uh, appear? No. What time is it? Yes. Less 15 minutes for it. Hey, so we have 15 minutes before pizza and beer and PlayStation. Uh, Paul, Paul Melero says that. Thank you for, for the mention. Good friend. <laughs> uh, so we have 15 minutes. If you want to, uh, if you want to ask anything, any questions? Uh, when you talk about uh, using material design, yeah. something that should be decided by UX people, or I mean, uh, how do you get that decision? Because it should come, all the design should give you the basics of our design. In my opinion, in my opinion, it should be used by both. Okay? So UX people should be smart enough to code it, to design. Uh, in a way that is accessible for everyone, okay, and that is uh, able to get to different uh, people, okay. But you, as a developer, you should be able to develop what they design, okay. So basically, it should be used by both. Material design is some, something you learn, uh, and you can apply it in both the stages of the development process, designing and coding, okay. okay. Um. Alejandro Morales uh, asked that, um, uh, are we seeing any example where you add all these basic elements, uh, HTML, CSS, uh, in case we don't know if, uh, in case if we don't know, uh, how can I identify which is each component inside the, the, the web page? Yeah, we didn't open the, the application, but we can do it. Like, uh, there are other things like choosing which uh, code editor you're going to use. Uh, I'd like to use this one in presentations because it allows you something as basic as zooming the entire thing. Okay, but if you open your application here, Ooh. Well, once you open your application, I will open a folder here. I will go to my desktop and then I will search for my app. When is it my app? So you open this folder, which is the root Angular project, and then Here. Inside here, you can identify easily by 
just watching the extension of the files. What is an HTML file? What is, what is a SAS or CSS file? Where Hello. Are you can see here, spec.ts are the test suites and then the component classes. Okay. Hello. So, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm Alejandro. Uh, I have another question regarding this. Um, all these elements are automatically added when you are just setting up Angular? Yeah, uh, once once you create uh, once you create the project, you get a basic structure, okay? And mm -hmm. then while you uh, do some progress on, on your coding, you can add new modules, new components, new classes, okay? And you can do it by using the Angular CLI uh, functions, or you can do it you can do it by hand. At the end, an HTML file is basically including HTML code. Or mm -hmm. if you try to write a component class, for example, you can know you, you can know uh, know the basic structure, which is having the imports in the first block, MScript six uh, imports, which basically tells you where are the dependencies, uh, the dependencies of your component service or directive. Then uh, you get in this case it's a component, so you get this uh, metadata metadata of the component saying which selector you are using, uh, where is the template or the styles for this component, and after mm -hmm. that, a third block, which is the class implementation. Mm -hmm. And another question, sorry, I'm very novel in the front end. That's why sure. I have so many questions. Uh, when I look at the code, how can I identify the uh, Angular code and the HTML. Well, for example, the HTML it's pretty easy, okay, because it's uh, inside tags. But where can I see the difference between Angular and another JavaScript code? How can you, how can you see if this is an Angular project? Yes, if no, it's if a uh, word, for example, a key, uh, a simple word, it's a uh, Angular keyword or a uh, JavaScript keyword. Well, here almost everything is JavaScript, unless you are referring to uh, custom selectors. For example, if you write a component, you mm -hmm. basically define a selector, which is not pure Java, pure HTML. Okay, this is something that you will include in your HTML, uh, and what you're doing is extending uh, that HTML HTML capabilities into a new component. So. Uh, you need to get used to that and and start coding. You you uh, at first sight, everything uh, can be the same to you. Okay, but mm -hmm. once you start coding, you can uh, identify those uh, elements that are not pure uh, HTML, CSS, or or JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Good. Excellent. Uh, applying more for this for his answer. It helps to identify what kind of element you are using. In this case, it's a component and it's implementing the component component for which will be useful for, for, for people. For React people, the HTML is inside the, the JSX. Uh, here it's outside, so it's a little bit well, easier. Actually, it's a bit more complex than that, than that because you can have in Angular, uh, inside the class you can have the CSS code and also the HTML. You can have it in line, yeah. or you can have it in uh, different files around the application. Okay, but then uh, the structure in classes is common, like imports, then the curator saying what is that class, and then the class. And for components, you usually get four files: uh, the HTML, CSS, the tests, and the component class. Then services is uh, smaller. Services you only get test and class and so on. Yeah. Uh, for every component you have you have to have a HTML file. No. At least you need the component class. Yeah. Because you can have the, the the CSS and the HTML declared inside the decorator. Okay. And then it's uh, it's optional having the, the test. Okay. So you at least need one file which is the component class. So you can have it in line. You can have it uh, outside. Okay. Good. This is the last video. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one.
No, this is your one you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you can code. Uh, you can code this in Notepad. You can code it anywhere. <coughs> like basically any, not code editor. Any text editor will work. Okay, you need only a text editor and a terminal. Uh, this is Visual Studio Code, which is uh, free and is quite common among developers. And I prefer using WebStorm, which is from JetBrain, and people coming from Java probably know it, and also people that develop uh, for Android, because it's, uh, it's all, I, I think I read somewhere that WebStorm is the best integrated development environment to, to web developers. Okay, so the difference is that this is free, and the other one, the other one is like uh, 50 euro the license uh, per year or 200 depending on on the type of license so it's up to you so that's it so thank you very much and hope to see you again in one of the next sessions okay que no son de la oficina, doblando por aquí, o, o bueno, que, que uno de los chicos les lleve, doblando por aquí está la cocina, nos vemos ahora ahí.